hello and welcome to Insight. Well, today we have some foot tapping music and you're in for a great treat. We have the Watermelon uh, Pie Old Time String Band and I'd like to introduce my guest, Mr. Mel Durham. Hi, Mel. How are you? And one of our young guests here, Chris Berry. Right. And then we're going to come back and uh, introduce the rest of the group. So can you play some of this music to really let the people know what this, all this music is about? Sure. And then we're going to come back and interview you. Tell me something. How did you get started in this beautiful music? And when did you start? Well, I probably, I was born in 1914. And I would say I really, about uh, 19, 19, 1920, I got interested in playing, uh, playing the fiddle. Mm -hmm. Violin, of course, was the same thing. My dad was a fiddler, and of course, I heard it all my life. And uh, we were from an area where there was uh, a lot of, of uh, fiddlers, and uh, so I, I just kind of grew up with it, and that's, and and I did uh, th take theory in school, and uh, and I read, but not enough to hurt my plan. <laughs> <laughs> and now, uh, is this how many people is in your group here? Is this all the group here that plays with you all the time? <laughs> 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 At least as far as you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, the exciting things that you're doing. At 85 years old, this is unbelievable. Well, my uh, normal routine, I, uh, I, I'm an early riser, and I usually either run or walk about two and a half miles every morning, lift light weights when I get back, and have my breakfast. Oh my heavens, that's what keeps you so young. <laughs> yes. Well, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, first of all, I have so many wonderful friends, people that kind of look after me and uh, visit a lot. I'm very, very active in, in uh, I'm president of the Old Time Builders Association, and uh, we promote traditional fiddling, uh, and uh, we meet at the Masonic Lodge on uh, the second and fourth Sundays in Bellflower, and it's all traditional fiddling, but we have the guitars and the banjo for accompaniment, and uh, then uh, we jam around the country a lot, we play a lot together, and... Uh, you travel a lot? Yes. Okay. And uh, I, I, I do have, uh, play out of state uh, quite a bit, but... There's all this. This music is just bountiful in California, and there's lots of fiddlers, and everybody here has a is has a different background, but uh, they uh, they all play and love the music. Okay, tell us some of the places that you're playing in the Long Beach area. <laughs> Do you remember? I don't know. <laughs> well, no, we play. We let me get that for a second. <laughs> We play we play at dances uh, and stuff uh, on the uh, I'm sorry <laughs> we play at dances around uh, Anaheim and uh, Anaheim and Bellflower uh, on the first there's a dance on the first Friday I believe it second is second Friday second Friday and the and fourth the fourth Saturday. Saturday of every month we play at those dances and then we play uh, we play to coffee houses and occasional gigs and stuff like that around now Chris. You're the youngest one. You're the baby of the group. <laughs> how old are you? I'm 27. 27. Well, I'll just, be just so how did you get involved with this group and the music? 
Well, I st- uh, started off playing. Uh, I started off playing blues guitar, as a matter of fact, the acoustic blues guitar, which I still do, and through that got into playing the banjo and uh, went to different places. There's all these uh, parties, music parties and stuff that people give and met the people like Jack and Mel and we got into playing and they wanted me to come and play for dances and I'll started playing this kind of music. What? And uh, I've been playing, I played guitar for about 10 years now and banjo for six or seven. Oh, my heavens. So it's a lot of fun. really enjoy it. Okay, oh, now pass yeah. the mic around. I will. We're going to introduce I gotta, it. I've got to tell about this guy. Okay. He's, he, he's amazingly talented. He can pick <laughs> up almost any instrument. He just picked up the fiddle, and he's going to, he's going to be out fiddling the rest of us before we know it. So, so Chris has been a, uh, a, a great big influx of talent for us. And then Gene, you've been working with uh, Mel for how many years? Gosh, I've known Mel. I can't remember when I met him. It's at least... 30 years, maybe more, yeah. Oh, that long? Yes. Yeah. Now, how long you been with him? Pardon me? How long have you been with him? Well, let's see. When did we first run into you, Mel? I guess I came up to Old Time Fiddlers and, and, yeah. and, and met you there a um, bunch of years ago and uh, started to learn some of his tunes because, uh, well, for me, for all of us, for all Old Time Fiddlers, because I also play fiddle, mm-hmm. uh, Mel is a wonderful resource because he's he, so a lot of the tunes he knows, nobody else knows. And he teaches t- uh, uh, fiddling in a particular way, learning the bowing and everything from uh, from from Mel. So it's been a while. Yeah, well, come on. And we have an uh, a, a a harp player. I need a harmonica. <laughs> it, it's called a French harp because it's neither French nor a harp, right? This is Dr. Hugh Nestor. Hi, hi. <laughs> Don't be shy. Just come on in and talk. <laughs> I, may, I may speak too much. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I uh, uh, became interested in this music, uh, I guess, 20 years ago, just going to folk music uh, uh, associations and uh, a lot of jams. And so uh, Jack and I played with another band, and uh, now we're playing you know, with the Watermelon Pie. I, uh, I'm sort of a camp follower. I, I'm, I'm really the young one musically, but I like to follow these guys around. And I play the mandolin, the little fiddle, and the harmonica. I think that completes myself. I'm retired. <laughs> oh, okay. So when you play with your little group now, do you switch over and you start playing your harmonica as a soloist? We've got to get him to play the harmonica. He plays the tar out of that harmonica. Oh, but does he? <laughs> wow. Oh, well, I'm not going to uh, talk too long because we really want to hear some of your music. Now, we want to get back to uh, Mel. And Mel, tell us some of the things that you're planning on doing in the future, because uh, you have a long ways to go here. Again? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Now, you know, one thing I wanted to talk about is some of these pictures here. I want Mel? you to tell me about these pictures here. Can you see this? I don't know whether you can see that. This, the, this, bottom, picture, this bottom picture was taken, uh, I think, 1936. And... Uh, uh, this is uh, Yale Rosenberg was from Kentucky. He played mandolin in the group. This is my brother Don plays guitar. My dad's a fiddler. And my dad's cousin Henry Durham uh, played the uh, three finger uh, five string banjo. And uh, or I'm in the, uh, the bass fiddle player there. And this is my brother Don playing guitar. And we um, incidentally we won a state contest at the University of Illinois in 1936. And we also represented the state of Illinois in traditional a string music at the first National Folk Festival at Orchestra Hall in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And this picture up here is a later group. There's a, Jack Carter is a fiddler. He's from Rosine, Kentucky. He grew up with Bill Monroe, who is uh, a bluegrass uh, legend. And my brother Don and myself and Truman Adams played piano. We, uh, when, when um, Sunny Hills was a mecca for square dancing in the Fullerton area, we were the house band out at it's the Sunny Hills, and we did lots and lots of square dancing. Jack was an excellent, excellent fiddler, and uh, I think he lives around Phoenix now. Mm-hmm. But he's from Rosine, Kentucky, originally. And uh, so there's a lot of memories there, too. Yes. Well, you know, I, uh, not to forget, but when, when I came to California, I went with a very fine big dance band. I played string bass 
with Frankie Gould's band, who was with Frankie for almost eight years. Really? The Crystal Ballroom in Long Beach, and mm -hmm. when we had the pipe, there was the Majestic Ballroom. We was there about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So then when bluegrass and folk music come along, I was home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still, still home. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's been a happy thing for me. That's fantastic. What about those dancers you were telling me about? Dancers? Yeah. The, the, the dances? Uh -huh. you, you want to tell them about the dances a little bit, Jack? Oh, sure. The dancers are put on by the Living Tradition, which is an organization devoted to the preservation of old-time music and dance. Uh -huh. It's called Contra Dancing, uh, which is uh, actually came from New England. It's uh, dancing up and down two lines. It's, it's sort of the ancestor of uh, square dancing, uh -huh. just as this music, the old-time country music, is the ancestor of bluegrass. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it, you don't have to know what you're doing. I mean, the, um, we, uh, we say the band doesn't, so why should the dancers? <laughs> the dancers are called. They're, 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 there's, a whole, there's a whole thing of being a dance caller and having knowing how to do that and running a dance. We have some very good callers that, that run the dances. So I hope there will be some information as to how, to how to get in on the dances because there are lots and lots of fun. Do you know the phone number offhand? I don't offhand. No, okay. I think so we we'll, have it, I think we'll we have have it, it on the screen. Yeah, we'll have it up later. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have it over there. okay. All right, so now, how often do you play for these dancers? Whenever we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it now? Do you have to really know how to do the dance? Can anybody? No, see, that's the neat thing about it. It's, it's it's called, and the ba the basic steps are pretty basic. We probably all got it in uh, sixth grade gym, uh, you know, do si do and the swing and and that sort of thing. Uh, at least when I was in schools, you know, about a hundred years ago, they used to do some folk dancing in sixth grade, and it's still the same sort of thing. Uh, and, and everything is taught, and it's all fun. And, and the neat thing about the living tradition uh, dances also is that people come from all ages. Uh, we have, uh, we've had little kids that uh, fall asleep under the table, and we have potlucks, and, uh, and, uh, and then we have the young couples, and we have the older couples. We've had people that have met at the dances and got married, and, and uh, that sort of thing. So it's an, old, it's an old thing going on for some years. Don't forget the jams before the... Oh yeah, the folk music. Uh, you, you can come bring your instruments and play along with our band. We, we always welcome people to play really? along with us as a dance, because that's how you learn the music. See, this is an, uh, an acoustic, learned, um, not written down type of music. The only way you learn it is, is to be around it and play with other people and learn to love it. And this is why it's very traditional. None of us is reading music tonight. Well, now, what type of inter instrument would you need to play with your band? What did you see? Say if I wanted to come along, which instrument would bring, I bring? You can bring any of these. <laughs> you can bring spoons to play on spoons. Really? You, you can, uh, you know. That so sounds like it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. And it's, 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 it's traditional. This is American music. Now, could you tell me just a little bit of history about your instruments, and then I'm going to let you go and play some music. Probably the first thing that happened in old-time music in this country was the fiddle. Uh -huh. It was brought over by the Irish and, uh, and the English, and they played it. And then probably the next thing that came over was this. And this is the, the ancestor of this is from uh, West Africa, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's an African instrument and came with the slaves. And the marriage of the two, and it, interestingly enough, the banjo-fiddle duet is the very heart and soul of old-time American music. And the marriage of the English, Irish, and the African is the very heart and soul of American music. So this is the oldest. This was the instrument that was played by the cowboys, by the way, not the ban not the guitar. That's Contrary to, yes, it was play everybody played the banjo. It was a lot more sturdy. Oh. Um, so that's that's what this music is. People oftentimes say, Don't you do bluegrass? And they say, Well, bluegrass is a more modern type of music. Came in the late 30s, I believe it was, from Bill Munro. You have to say Munro if you say oh. cotton bluegrass. <laughs> and you got to wear a hat too, don't you, Mel? Yes, and you have to stand up. And you have to stand up. You know, say, what's the difference in old time music? And, don't yeah, you don't smile. <laughs> old time music, you sit down and bluegrass, you stand up and wear a hat. Oh, now why is Chris' instrument different? A little different than oh, good. Roy's? Does it have a different sound? Yes, it does have a different sound. They both are they both are basically the same the same instrument. They have this. Uh, this ring, the pot around here, and then, and then this is plastic, but originally this would have been a gut head, uh, and that one's plastic too, but it's easier, the weather changes, when the humidity changes, if you have a gut head, it throws the tension of the whole thing out of whack. Oh. Uh, this came along, uh, this came along, I guess, in the early 1900s, the thing on the back, which is called a resonator, mm -hmm. and it just allows you to get, to get more of a projected 
sound out of the banjo. It's a, it's a louder, a little bit brighter sound. Oh. Uh, the banjo, old time banjo sound is, is kind of plunky, uh -huh. is the only way I could think of it, and as opposed to a bluegrass banjo sound, which is, has a real bright, ringing kind of tone to it, and they play with finger picks. I play with my bare fingers and play the old time, either knockdown style or finger picking style. Huh. But Jack's, Jack's is just the same as mine, except it doesn't have this, doesn't have this resonator. Oh, on the back of it. I see. If I if I uh, if I took the back of this yeah. off, you'd see the same little rod. So yours everything. is more like stereo. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's like it's like a built-in. It's like almost like a built-in amplifier. Yeah. This is a banjo. This is a banjo on turbo. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here, yeah. Go ahead. Dan. Another thing about it, you'll, we, we'll be playing different styles because because they'll go together. Okay. Uh, Chris will be mostly finger picking, and I'll be frailing. Uh, he frails very well, but just when you have the two banjos together, you'll see, you'll hear the two different styles. Okay, well, I'm going to let you play, and I'm going to get out of the picture here, and then um, we're just going to go off with you playing. Good. Okay? Maybe we should okay. change over to our D now. Okay. Right. The other well, thing I'll about just move mine out okay. of the way. The other here. thing about banjos and old-time music, unfortunately, is you have to continue to re be retuning. Oh, okay. So that was the beginning of vaudeville, we like to say, because you had to think of jokes to tell while you're <laughs> tuning the darn thing. So is that what you call a warm-up? <laughs> I, I uh, stayed with Mel. He, we played in Wash he played in Washington State up in Port Townsend. I followed him around for a week. That was the most amazing week I ever had. He was constantly followed by a bunch of fiddle, uh, young fiddlers learning his tunes. Girls. Could you, <laughs> and girls, and, well, anyway, he's got it. But the most amazing thing, we went into classes, and pretty soon Mel was playing repertoire with the people who were teaching the classes. And for the mainliner of the whole, the last most important uh, star, he's on stage, and they're milling about, and they page Mel from a crowd of 6,000 people to come up and play the bass without practice. <laughs> really? No practice. He got on stage, he had to find the bass, and he played with this mainliner without knowing the repertoire, and it was beautiful. So that's a talent that I really had qu quite a time. It's hard to keep up with him. I'm, I'm only 15 years younger than him. I can't keep up with him. <laughs> I know. Isn't that something? Good. Well, what do we play in D? Oh. What you gonna What you gonna play, Mel? You wanna talk a little bit? You wanna? No, this is. Um. Okay, so I'll just let you take over here. Okay, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Why don't you play King's Lament, Mel? Okay. George King was a uh, fiddler and uh, blacksmith in Johnsonville, Illinois, down in uh, the Little Leap area, and he played this tune, and uh, it's called King's Lament. We don't know whether it's George King's Lament or whether it's a real King's Lament. <laughs> All righty. You have to make up your mind, I guess.
Mighty fine, Mel. How about another one? <laughs> we we sit around all the time and uh, try to decide what tunes to play. It takes up a large proportion of our yeah, time. We won't show them that. Yeah. How how about Rocky Mountain, Mel? Ooh, that's a good. One. <laughs> We still have some. We have a couple more minutes, yeah. I think, for uh, another tune. Yes. About five more minutes, okay? How about another D tune, Mel? We, we just did that one. <laughs> oh, that one, all right. This one doesn't have a name. Fun. How about some Robinson County? Can you want to do? Uh, we got just what? Well, we got just one minute, Mel. Just something real quick. Uh, either Robinson County or Sop in the Welcome Gravy. Three, Welcome three Welcome minutes. Gravy, three minutes left. All right. All right. Sop in the Gravy. Are you ready? It's a tune called Sop in the Gravy.
ruffle one more quick, Ruffle doors, do some ruffle doors. Anything. It's a great one. Let it go. <laughs>